Now let's talk about the generosity of the Prophet Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, in describing the generosity of the Prophet, he says, Kana ajwad nasi kaffan. He had the most generous hand. This is an Arabic literary expression that means he was very generous in giving because you usually give with which body part? With your hands. And then he would say that the Prophet had, you know, the biggest chest, meaning he had a lot of patience with his people. In Arabic, they say that. Some people, their chest is tight. He doesn't have patience. Some people know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them patience. And he was the most truthful person. He was the most loyal of them. He was very flexible. Some people, they're rigid. The Prophet was flexible. You would live with the Prophet, he was always honorable. The one who would see him automatically, inadvertently, you wouldn't fear him. However, his majesty and glory would captivate you. You would respect him. And if you get to know him, you sincerely love him. Imam Ali is saying this, I've never seen anyone like him, before him or after him. So the Prophet according to the testimony of Imam Ali, he was the most generous of people. Ibn Abbas narrates this hadith from the Prophet. He himself, the Prophet says, Ana Adibullah. What does Adibullah mean? Adib comes from the word Adab. Yes, manners. So what does it mean that I am Adibullah? I'm, I'm showing the characteristics and manners of Allah? No, Allah mannered me. Oh. Allah raised me on these manners. You know, sometimes you see a child, he's very well mannered. So you would ask, who taught him that? Who raised him? Who mannered him? The Prophet says, Allah mannered me. Amarani Rabbi bisakha. Allah has commanded me to be generous. Walbir, righteousness. Wanahani anil bukhli wal jafa. And Allah prohibited me from being stingy and cheap. Wama shayun abghadu ilallahi min al bukhl. There's nothing more despicable in the eyes of God than stinginess, bukhl. Wasu al khuluq. And to have bad akhlaq. We have a hadith that a generous person, eventually his generosity leads him to the path of righteousness. The person will believe. Maybe moments before the, the death, Allah shows them the way they eventually believe. And the hadith says the one who's bakhil, the one who's stingy, eventually they lose their iman. So one of the qualities of a believer is to be generous. Stinginess is a sign of disbelief in fact. Now you could ask why? First of all, it indicates lack of belief in Allah as the sustainer. Why are you stingy? What are you scared of? The one who's stingy, not the one who's trying to be humble, no, the one who's stingy, bakhil. Now the Prophet with himself, he was strict, but with the people, he would give and give and give, so he was generous. Some people know they don't give, they're stingy. Why does stinginess indicate lack of belief? Because it means you don't really believe Allah as the sustainer because you're scared that your money would decrease or something would happen. So then where's Allah? Their iman is weak, stingy people. Or it eventually leads to denying the religious financial obligations. People who are stingy have a hard time paying their zakat, their wajib sadaqah, their khums, their kafara, all of that. They have a difficulty paying that because they're stingy. But the generous person, it's easier for them to give their financial obligations, to relieve themselves from their financial obligations. Another aspect of stinginess that leads to kufr is that it makes a person more likely to sell his religion in return for material gain. See if you have two people in front of you, one's really generous and one's very stingy, which one do you think you could sway more with money and maybe bribe them and buy them with money? Which one? The stingy one. The generous one, it's more difficult to sway them with money because they're generous. Yes, they do care about money, but money is not everything for them. They are generous. 
So the Prophet ﷺ was so generous to the point where Imam al-Sadiq states, once the Prophet was in Al-Ji'rana, Al-Ji'rana is a village, is a place between Ta'if and Mecca. Ta'if is a city that's about a hundred kilometers maybe from Mecca. These days maybe with the car you can, it's about an hour driving distance, right? Ji'rana is between Ta'if and Mecca. He says the Prophet took money and he started to distribute it amongst the people. And the people kept asking him, he kept giving them until, have you seen sometimes when you in, in, in poor areas, you start distributing something, suddenly this huge circles around you and people start pushing each other, that's what happened. Hatta al jauhu ila shajara. Imam Sadiq says, they kept chasing him until they cornered him against a tree. فَأَخَذَتْ بُرْدَهُ وَخَدَشَتْ ظَهْرَ Because they pushed him against the tree, the Prophet got injured. You know, sometimes the tree has sharp branches going. He basically got pushed against the tree, he got injured. And therefore the Prophet had to leave the city because, <laughs> you know, there was a stampede around him. And the Prophet, he was wearing a garment, that upper garment fell. So he told them, give me back my garment, I have to leave the city now. Then he told them, Wallah, لَوْ كَانَ عِنْدِي عَدَدْ شَجَرْ تَهَامَ I swear by Allah, if I had money, as much as there are trees around here, I would have given it to you. So that's it, my money is gone, I've given all of it to you. And you would not find me as a stingy person. Then the Prophet ﷺ left, um, you know, in, in Dhul Qa'dah, he left Al Ja'arran. By the way, the narrator of this incident, he says, I swear by Allah, whenever I would see that tree that the Prophet was pressed against and the Prophet got injured by that tree, I, whenever I pass by that tree, I see it green. For a long time after the Prophet, the tree basically was green, always very lush, even though it's a desert environment, but it was very lush. In another hadith that describes the generous akhlaq and nature of the Prophet ﷺ, it states, كَانَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَآلِهِ أَحْكَمُ النَّاسِ أَحْكَمَ النَّاسِ He was the wisest of all people. وَأَحْلَمَهُمْ He had the most forbearance and patience. وَأَشْجَعَهُمْ He was the most courageous. وَأَعْدَلَهُمْ The most just. وَأَعْطَفَهُمْ What's وَأَعْطَفَهُمْ? From Atf. The most compassionate, like the affection and the compassion of the mother. لم تمس يده يدا امرأة لا تحل. Never in his life did he touch a lady that was haram to him, because the Prophet was mindful of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. وأسخ الناس and he was the most generous of all. لا يثبت عنده دينار ولا درهم at night. Never you would see any money that stayed with the Prophet فَإِنْ فَضُلَ وَلَمْ يَجِدْ مَنْ يُعْطِيهِ وَيَجِنُّهُ اللَّيْلِ لَمْ يَأْوِ إِلَى مَنْزِلِهِ حَتَّى يَتَبَرَّأْ مِنْهُ إِلَى مَنْ يَحْتَاجُ إِلَيْهِ The Prophet considered money as a liability. He made sure that the sun does not set except that any money that was in his possession would be given to the people, it would be spent. And let's say some days the Prophet gave the money and there's still some leftover money. Does the Prophet keep it in the Muslim treasury until the following day? No. He says the Prophet considered that money as a liability, as a burden on him. So he would go in Medina looking for anyone who was in need and he would basically relieve himself from that financial burden. He would give the, that person the dirham and the dinar, he would go back to his house without any money left. Now some people say, my dear brothers and sisters, that this is irresponsible. You have to have in the treasury, money for the future, for emergencies, right? Imam Ali and the Prophet ﷺ, that wasn't their philosophy. Yes, you can save money for the future if your present is taken care of. But if there are people starving now, what are you saving for? Seriously, what are you saving for? You're saving for a year, two years down the line when an emergency happened. Habibi, right now there is an emergency. There are people who need this money. 
And the present is more important than the future. Leave the future with Allah. Allah is the sustainer. He will give. But no, in our Western capitalist system, we believe in storing for the future. We talked about this the other day in Nahjul Balagha, the retirement plans, the 401ks, right? From now, you're dedicating a lot of your resources for your retirement days. When there are people who are starving now, they can't get married now, they don't have a shelter now, they need it more than that. You've got that extra money, give it to them. Allah will take care of you when you're older. Isn't Allah the Razzaq? He'll take care of you. So the Prophet made sure that any excess money that he had in his possession for the people, he would give it that same day. He would not wait until tomorrow. Question, did the Prophet take any money for himself from the public treasury? Yes, he would. In the end, the Prophet needed some money to live on, right? The Imam says he would take only the bare minimum to live on. Just some dates and some sha'ir, barley. That's all. That's all the Prophet would take. Any other money that he had, whether it's a gift that was given to him, whether it's the religious dues that were handed to him, the Prophet would give it to other people. He would only keep a little bit for himself so he would not starve, literally, just to avoid starvation. He would keep some dates for himself and also some barley for himself. And one beautiful hadith describes the generosity of the Prophet when a huge amount of money, 80,000 coins were brought to the Prophet from Bahrain, the island of Bahrain. Bahrain historically at the time of the Prophet had a good economy primarily because of what? Does anyone know historically how the people in Bahrain during the time of the Imams made a lot of money? Diving. Through diving they would extract uh, pearls from the ocean and valuables. They were good at that. So 80,000 coins were brought to the Prophet ﷺ from Bahrain. وَقَدْ تَوَضَّأَ لِصَلَاةِ الظُّهْرِ when, did the, when, when was the money given to the Prophet? When he had just done wudu for which salah? The dhuhr prayer. So he's about to pray, right? Because he just did wudu. فَمَا صَلَّى يَوْمَ إِذَنْ حَتَّى فَرَّقَ the Prophet did not pray Dhuhr that day until he had basically distributed all those 80,000 coins. I mean imagine how much time does it take you to distribute 80,000 coins, right? 100 to this person, 50 to this person, 500 to this person. And we know the Prophet was very peculiar and very sensitive about the time of Salah. But look at his generosity. People are in need, give them. Don't store the money, don't keep it for next hour. Someone could have told him, Ya Rasulullah, you could have waited till after Salah. No, no. Look at the lessons in generosity the Prophet is teaching. You have that money, give it to the people. Don't hoard it, don't keep it even a single minute. Because if you delay it an hour, sometimes you know we delay the Sadaqah too much, right? There are people who need it now. If you've delayed it an hour, maybe you prolonged the hunger of someone for an hour. Do you know that? Keep that in mind. Or someone who wants to get married, maybe be, had you given them that assistance earlier, they would have gotten married earlier. Or the person has an illness they're dealing with, or whatever financial crisis. Never delay giving the sadaqah. Never delay giving to people because they might need it now. The Prophet was so generous such that he never said no to anyone. Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari, one of the great companions of the Prophet, he says, لم يكن يسأل رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله شيئاً قط Whenever the Prophet would be asked about anything, فيقول لا, he would never say no. He literally would never say no. That was his akhlaq. So the Prophet ﷺ was really, really generous. And that's part of the akhlaq of one who follows the Prophet ﷺ. If you have difficulty, train yourself. And the hadith says 40 days, train yourself to something 
you develop that habit. 40 days, act like you're generous. Maybe from the inside, it's difficult to give. You feel, you know, you're struggling, but it's okay. Bring yourself 40 days to be generous. You will eventually become generous. This is the akhlaq of the Prophet Now in describing the financial generosity of the Prophet, one of the attributes of the Prophet is that he would accept the hadiyah. وَكَانَ يَقْبَلُ الْهَدِيَّةِ If you give him a gift, the Prophet would honor you and accept the gift. Because when you turn down someone's gift, they feel offended, right? The Prophet did not want to offend the believers. وَلَوْ أَنَّهَا جُرْعَتْ لَبَنْ Even if it's a cup of milk. Sometimes if someone gives you a, a petty gift, I've seen some people, they reject it. Have you seen people? I've seen that in multiple situations. The hadith states the Prophet would accept the gift even if it's a sip of milk, not even a full cup of milk, a sip of milk. The Prophet would accept it and he would accept it. But he would never take of course sadaqah. 